Bible tells us we've been saved by grace through faith. It's a gift from God and not by our works so that we can never brag about anything we've done to be saved. And just like being saved by grace, there's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. But I do believe that God gives us certain gifts and talents and abilities and I think everything that we have, He's provided for us, that we should use it for Him. So I do believe that even though we're saved by grace, we're going to be held accountable for what we do with the things that God has provided for us. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Are you being a profitable servant for the Lord? I'll share with you a story out of Matthew chapter 25. Some of you may have heard this parable before, but Jesus tells the parable of the talents. First, understand that a talent is a large amount of money, is what the Bible is talking about here. But it says that this uh, master goes out to a foreign country on a journey. And before he leaves, he calls in uh, three of his servants. And the first servant, he gives him five talents. And the second servant, he gives him two talents. And the last servant, he only gives him one talent. Now, the Bible says that uh, he gives to each according to his own ability. Now, we see here that each servant is entrusted with a different amount of money. But what I want you to understand here is that everybody receives something, but not everybody receives the same amount. But while the master is gone, the first servant with five talents, he goes out and he trades them and he invests them and he doubles them. And the second servant does the same thing. He takes his two talents and he goes out and he trades and he invests and he doubles his. But the third servant, he takes his talent and he goes out and he digs a hole and he buries it and he hides his talent. But when the master comes back, the first servant runs out and he says, Lord, you gave me five and I've gained five more. And this is what the master told him. He said, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Well, the second servant comes up and he says, you know, you, you provided me with two and I went out and I gained two more. And again, he tells him the same thing. But the last one that went and hid his in the ground, well, he has a different story to tell the master. The first two servants were prepared for the day that the master would return. And they took their talents and they invested them. And they showed a profit of taking what the master had provided for them and using it to provide something back for the master on his return. But the last one was so worried about the judgment part that he feared. And he saw him as a taskmaster. So he hid his talent away. And when the master returned, he had nothing to show for it, no gain at all. He basically went in with this <clears throat> view as a, of the master as a harsh and unrelenting taskmaster. And because of that, he made unwise choices, and he was not prepared for the day of the Lord's return. And this is what the Lord told him. He called him a wicked and lazy servant let me ask you a question do you see yourself as a steward or do you see yourself as an owner because the answer to that question makes a big difference of what you do with what you have see a steward believes that everything is provided for him to use and to invest and he waits upon the day that the master would return so that he can show the profit that he's earned However, an owner believes that everything he has is his, and he can do with it as he pleases. Knowing the difference between whether you're a steward and an owner makes a big difference in what you do with what's provided for you. You know, we're all entrusted with different amounts. And sometimes it's easy to complain that we don't have as much as somebody else. But it's important to remember that we've been entrusted from God 
with certain talents that we should use for him. We may not all receive the same amount, but what we do with the amount we've received is very important. I don't want you to get confused today and think I'm talking just about money. Uh, I'm talking about things that's been entrusted to you. Your abilities, uh, family, friends, your church. You may have been elevated into a position of power where you have authority over a few or many people. How are you using everything that's provided for you to be profitable for the Lord? Are you taking what He's provided for you and investing it wisely? I want to end it this week with a couple of verses here from 1 Peter chapter 4. This is what it says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak with the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to who belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God bless you this week. And don't hide your talents. Invest them. Take what God has given you and use it for His glory.